Welcome to Open Table, a bi-weekly college podcast created by Friendland to help people share their opinions on social issues. If you like listening to scholars with different opinions, this is your podcast. Well, all right. So today with me, I have a professor from North Central College who basically main focus is gender study. Um, without further ado, let the professor introduce herself. Can you please introduce yourself? Sure, happy to. Thank you for having me on. My name is Megan Cole Postian. I am a professor in the English department and also in the department of um, gender and sexuality studies. So I teach a lot of writing courses. I teach a lot of literature courses and I teach classes in um, feminism and gender theory as well. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Polston. So as you know, March is Women's History Month, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something on the women's right. First question would be, um, what is feminism? We we heard a lot about it, so explain to us what is it? What does it mean? We do. Thank you. Um, So I think one thing that's helpful is to talk about feminisms, plural, because there are so many thinkers on this and so many perspectives. And so, um, you know, any one version of it isn't all of it and is incomplete. But I would say my definition is that feminism is about challenging sexism, challenging the oppression of women in all the forms it takes. So not only in terms of gender, but in terms of race, in terms of social class, in terms of all kinds of other experiences. And it also challenges the system of gender categorization. So how we even define what is it to be a woman? What is it to be a man? It really questions and complicates those categories. Oh my goodness. Okay, so who can be a feminist? Anyone. Anyone can be a feminist. To uh, take a quote from Bell Hooks, feminism is for everybody. It is absolutely, like not only for women, um, it is for men. I think both because the issues, right? So even if it comes out of starting from um, challenging sexism and starting from a focus on the oppression of women, Those are issues that affect everyone and are important to everyone. And particularly in the way that it helps us think differently about gender, it helps us think different about femininity, but also about masculinity. And so I think that there can be something really liberating in that as well. Yes. Uh, So my next question would be speaking of masculinity, how is the feminism movement um, dealing with masculinity? That's a good question. It does a lot of thinking, I would say, a lot of thinking about masculinity. One of the central ideas um, within feminism is that gender is not something that is just like inherent and inborn and essential, but it is something that is constructed by our cultures and our societies and What that means is that there's not any one way to be a woman. And it also means there's not any one way to be a man. And so feminism thinks about that. And it also thinks about the problems and the dangers and the difficulties that we do run into with the ways that masculinity tends to be defined. And there are a number of feminist thinkers and scholars who are really thinking about the ways that our definitions of gender also oppress men and also put a lot of pressure and constraints on men. And so that's also one of the reasons I think that feminism is beneficial to men. And so I would hope that people will see critiques of masculinity, critiques about ideas of masculinity, not as something that's threatening, but as something that's potentially liberating for all of us. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense. So if feminism dealt with masculinity, that would mean also it's for men, 
However, you everyone knows this. There's a lot of men that believe that the feminism movement is an anti-man. So mm -hmm. is all men welcome into the movement? Yes, absolutely. And I would say, um, you know, in some cases, people might hear of a particular woman who says that she hates men or something like that. And sometimes take that like one instance to represent feminism. But feminism isn't, isn't about that at all. Um, and so I think it's really just a misunderstanding of feminism to think that it is anti-men. I think that feminism is um, really, like I said, for everybody and it wants to create a better world for everybody for women and for men yes so one thing that scares men is the hashtag me too movement and the hashtag me too movement become a huge part of the feminism movement which is holding people accountable for the action as everyone should be held accountable mm -hmm. so why is that me, the hashtag me too become a big strong part of the feminism movement I think, I think a big part of the reason that it caught on so much is because of the way that it recognized the struggles and the experiences that many women have had that have gone under the radar and that have often been just a part of, um, like a part of what is considered normal or business as usual. So with sexual harassment in the workplace, at school, with cases like that, things that just become normalized in our culture and women spent a lot of time thinking um, or feeling the experience that this is how it is and this is what we're kind of stuck with. I think it recognizes those experiences. And I'll say Tarana Burke, the woman who first, who first used that phrase, me too, sometimes gets sort of dropped out of the conversation as a black woman who coined that term and started that movement and that idea, it later got picked up by um, white celebrities and it really kind of exploded then. But I think that the roots of it really are in what's called an intersectional feminism or one that yeah. includes multiple intersections or aspects of identity like gender and like race. Yes. Um, oh yeah. So next thing is you mentioned the first person who started the hashtag Me Too movement was a Black woman. And that's mm -hmm. something I did not even aware of, mm -hmm. which brings me to the, start to the topic why, because I've heard a lot of Black people are talking about womanism. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, then we just have a feminism movement? What is womanism and why is it important? Good question. So this comes, the term womanism comes from the writer Alice Walker. And it comes out of, I'll say one of, the, one of the ideas that it comes out of is the fact that what became sort of mainstream feminism that was dominated by white feminists has not always been, and in many ways remain, continues not to be inclusive of women of color, of black women in particular. And part of the problem with white feminism is when it tries to think about oppression only in terms of gender. So that if we talk about women as being only oppressed in terms of gender or only oppressed in terms of women, one of the, the pressures that it kind of creates is to ask black women to only think in terms of gender and not about also the oppression of racism that is occurring at the same time oh. and in a way that is not is not separable and so i'll say there's for you know many many years and i'm thinking all the way back to sojourner truth in the 1850s before emancipation even um there have always been really strong black feminist voices but it kind of came to be really associated in a lot of ways with white women. And actually, is it okay if I read you an Alice Walker? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Bring the receipts. <laughs> okay, great. So here you go. So this is Alice Walker and the way that she describes womanism. And this is in her book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens. And I wanna read this because it also connects to one of your earlier questions. Yes. She says a womanist is 
a black feminist or feminist of color. She elaborates to say it is a woman who loves other women sexually and or non-sexually, appreciates and prefers women's culture and women's emotional flexibility, values tears as a natural counterbalance of laughter and women's strength, sometimes loves individual men sexually and or non-sexually and is committed to survival and wholeness of entire people, male and female. And I think that that part committed to survival and wholeness of entire people, male and female, is a really helpful one for connecting back to your questions about the place of men within feminism. Yes, yes, that makes perfectly clear sense. So how would you describe some of the um, positive, positive change the movement has made for women? I think it has made enormous changes in terms of you know, women's access to education, to jobs, in many ways not being as constrained to sort of traditional notions of femininity. I think the changes that have made in the sort of experience of advances within feminism are very different depending on other aspects of your identity and your experience. So I think it varies a lot depending on where you're located in the world. It varies depending on your class background and educational background. It depends on um, your racial position. It depends also on all of these other social aspects. So I think we can't say that there's just one particular path that that has taken us, but I think that those are important strides I think that feminism is also becoming, I'll say that mainstream feminism is also becoming increasingly aware of the need to consider those different aspects of identity and the need to be working on anti-racist issues in particular and not just thinking in terms of gender. Yes, that sounds very, very great, very beautifully. And I think that women's empowerment and equality is an amazing thing. So my next question would be, um, who are some real people that you know, either celebrity or someone from history that who someone can look up to, for example, as a feminist? Oh, I love that question. For me, and this is partly, you know, I'm a literature professor and I love to read and I love books. And I think that becoming a more thoughtful and more effective feminist is very much about listening and about hearing from people and other people's experiences. And one of the great ways to do that is to read. I think I would recommend Audre Lorde as one of the um, great, great feminist writers she describes herself, and now I'm trying to remember the phrase that she uses in one of her books. She describes herself as a black feminist, lesbian, socialist, mother of four, including a boy, something like that. She has this sort of long description of herself, but just incredibly insightful um, for thinking about feminism and about race in America. I find too that one of my, one of my favorite parts of my job is introducing students to great writers. And I'll say that Audre Lorde is one that when students have read her, they've just sort of um, had their minds blown and really found her to be a role model. And I'd say another um, writer who thinks a lot about feminist and anti-racist teaching is Bell Hooks. And she's someone who's been a big role model for me in thinking about how to teach and how to create a community in the classroom as well. All right. Thank you so much. Well, mm -hmm. our last question before we go is, are you a feminist? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I am proudly a feminist. I would say me definitely too, because I believe in equality, whether it's gender or race or anything. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Professor, for coming. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Please do not be a stranger on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Frelin. It was wonderful talking to you. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Have a good rest of okay. your day. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe 
so you notify when a new episode is posted. Rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. Thank you for listening and I hope that you learned something new today.